Hi, welcome to the Caregiver's Guide. Today's topic is diet and exercise. As always, this information should not be used as a substitute for advice from appropriately qualified licensed practitioners of medicine, law, or financial planning. On the EDS scale, which is the expanded disability, this is a level zero, so it's normal. So I'm sure that most everybody understands the importance of diet and exercise. And the reason why we wanted to start with this topic is because it's so important to get a baseline understanding of what you're doing in your lifestyle and how that affects you as a caregiver, as well as the person that you're caring for. So it's important to understand that you want to make sure that you're getting the appropriate vitamins in your diet and that that isn't part of the reason why you have you know, particular symptoms of your disease. So there's a ton of diet apps, um, books and goals and things like that. And I'll put some of those on, on a website. Um, again, this isn't really to go ahead and promote anything specifically. It's just to kind of give you an idea of what it was um, back when uh, I had to kind of go through the the beginning phases of, you know, when, when we got the, the diagnosis. So it's really important to really figure out what routine works for you. So for resources on this topic, I really, really want you to be your own resource. You know yourself best. And I can't stress enough that prevention is the cure. In my undergraduate, I did a lot of work with biochem and medical, and I found a huge passion for industrial hygiene, which is basically the study of industrial products on the body and, and the consequences, um, different toxins and things like that. So being in the Midwest and having a lot of industry, I did that for several years because I wanted to help prevent people from having illnesses such as cancer or breathing disorders difficulties as they, they got to the retirement age. Um, there's a ton of apps out there. I'm not going to really review any of them in this particular segment. Um, I will talk about kind of what we went through as far as once the diagnosis hit on um, just in, on what we were eating, what we weren't eating, and you know what worked, what didn't work. And then really understanding that you even small doses of exercise really do help, really helps with your emotional state and obviously physical state. So one of the fortune cookies, which is a little ironic, um, came out, it's before you see the light, you have to deal with the darkness. And in some cases, sometimes you get sick and it does help you reevaluate what you need to do to help get better, right? It helps you become a healthier person. And there's so many icons out there where you can you know, look at like, hey, I came down with cancer and I, you know, reevaluated my life and I got on a better track. Um, the the one website which I really recommend checking out, um, it's I found it right now during the coronavirus, but it's the Worldometer, Worldometer.com, but it really shows you um, population growth and it has a lot of different things like the number of automobiles built per day, computers built per day, cell phones, things like that. But it's very interesting, the number of undernourished people in the world is almost half of what the overweight people are in the world. And then looking at the people who die of hunger and then the amount of money that we're spending on obesity related diseases in the U.S. So it's just amazing to me. Um, but that really does give you kind of a telling story on a high level of, you know, what, what we are doing to ourselves um, as a nation. So with exercise, um, I used to be very athletic. I was, you know, used to run constantly every single day. Um, and then as a caretaker, as somebody, that, you know, as a mom and somebody that was working and things like that, um, I, I didn't get out as much as I, I used to. I used to take an hour a day um, for exercise. And then that turned into, you know, half an hour, 15 minutes, and then I could barely get, you know, five minutes in. Um, so I kind of fell out of my routine and what I found was music really did help, um, kind of break that up. And even if you're, you're doing laundry or, you know, cleaning the house or cleaning your car or whatever, um, it really helps you kind of get motivated to, to either dance, run, walk, um, stretch, do lifting exercises. Um, and then I also listen to different types of music or, or beats, um, before I, I go to sleep.
So one of the things I want to point out is that food is so closely related to other things that we can be addicted to. So if you think about it, when somebody first becomes addicted to something, they start off consciously, you know, trying it or experimenting with it, expecting to have really a good positive results. So think about it like almost like a placebo, right? Even if you did something like, let's say, smoke a cigarette and you equate that with being with friends or, or being, you know, accepted into a peer group or something along those lines. And then eventually what happens is it becomes subconscious and it becomes rooted in your mind and your, your brain just automatically goes to that particular substance um, because it feels good and it just knows that. So food in a lot of cases has the same principle. So we've all been, you know, probably had that experience where, you're watching TV and you have a bag of chips next to you and the next thing you know that bag of chips just magically disappears or um, you're drinking something and then all of a sudden it evaporates, right? And the next thing you know you're just going to get, get another another beer or a glass of wine. Um, so it's one of those things that if you can consciously think to yourself, like if you, you know, whether or not you're smoking or you're eating something that you, you probably, you know, like a bag of cookies, um, if you think to yourself, how is this going to affect me later on? Um, it It's just a small little thing that can help you have a little bit more control. So every time you eat or drink, think to yourself, are you fe feeding the disease or are you fighting it? Are you doing something that's good for your body or something that, that you know, you're going to regret later? So I hope that helps. Um, there are a lot of things out there with, with regards to meditation that I also think help, and I'll do a, a cast on that. Um, so hopefully you can check that out. So for the PDCA starting with plan, it's important to create a diet and exercise plan that works for you and really addresses your needs. One of the things when John was diagnosed with MS, uh, we ended up buying 27 diet books um, that were going to cure MS. He was seeing a absolutely na you know nationally renowned neurologist at the time, and he said, "Look, this isn't necessarily going to give you a cure. It'll make you happy." Um, we definitely learned a lot from the experience. Um, I fell in love with juicing. Uh, it was it wasn't a bad thing, um, but I would say that um, he, the neurologist was right. Um, it, it didn't necessarily stop the disease. Um, it was a ton of work. And one of the things that I was definitely not a proponent of um, that I recently changed direction on is, is fasting. Um, not strict fasting, but um, I, I have done it and uh, it, it is, did some amazing things. So had amazing benefits um, with that. So I will talk more about that in a different segment. Um, but it's just, again, something that you want to look at, you know, what's going to work for you and then do a test for a week um, and then check to see if you're successful and why or why not. Um, and then adapt as needed. Um, it's, it's real easy, you know, just cut out one thing or two in your routine. Maybe it's ice cream, maybe it's beer. In my case, it was beer. Um, and then it'll help your exercise goals be a little bit more attainable as far as like walking around the block before dinner, just doing something very, very, you know, minor. Um, you don't have to go and run a marathon. You don't have to run, you know, 10 miles a day. Um, again, kind of going with the fasting, um, you know, if you cut out just, you know, a meal here or two, um, you might initially feel like you're super hungry. Um, but you realize that, hey, your body it adapts pretty pretty fast and pretty readily, um, and then you feel pretty good uh, over time. So I hope that helps. So in conclusion, I hope that you find a plan that works for you, and remember that the right one knows all your weaknesses and never uses them against you. So please hit like and subscribe and join me on future segments. Thanks.